she declined to the first day it was only on my birthday never mind all the lines on the highway give me time to reflect a bit cause i'm just having a good day having a good day having a real good morning i'm just having a good day food feeds our soul it nourishes us and gives us strength to do great things each day cooking together creates lifelong memories food has a magical way of bringing us back to a specific moment in time it is what connects us across the globe and across generations the food we enjoy is a part of our ethnic identity My name is Kasara. I enjoy cooking for fun and would love for you to join me. Together we'll learn how to make a few easy and delicious recipes. Let's get started. Uh, hi there. I'm Creamit. Creamit the Frog. And today, I would like to cook something with Kassara. How are you today, Kassara? I'm good, but first before we cook, we need to follow some safety tips. Uh, sure. Safety tips before you cook. Ask an adult permission before cooking. There should always be an adult in the kitchen with you when you are cooking. Wash your hands well before you begin handling food. Take extra caution when working with knives, hot liquids, and any appliances. Read labels carefully. Keep your cooking area tidy. If there's a spill, clean it up immediately. Okay, now that we've covered a few tips on how to cook safely, let's get cooking. Hello everyone. I'm happy that you can join me today in making some more recipes. We'll be making some extra delicious dishes, including an ultra satisfying chicken soup, sweet pierogies, and green onion cakes. Hi, Mr. Shu. Hello. Are you Keshula? Yes. Oh, I'm looking forward to meet you today. Thanks, me too. I heard that you were the one that made green onion cakes popular in Edmonton. Yes, I am. How did you learn how to make green onion cakes? Oh, when I was in your age, I asked my mother, Mom, can you teach me how to make green onion cake? My mother said, come, work with me. And this is what we're going to do today. I'm going to invite you, come, we join together, to make the green onion cake. Would you like it? Yes, please. Yes. Keshula, this is my mother was show me, and now I pass on to you, okay? So I need a full cup of the flowers. This is a bacon powder, two teaspoons. This is a bacon soda, only half teaspoon, okay. Mix well and make a middle, have a hole, big hole there. Have a two cup of the water, okay? So, we fold it, say like this. Very, very good. I can see you will be the baker very soon. <laughs> this is fun. Yes. This is fun, right? So now the dough is ready, we let it sit on the side, and we're going to chop the onion to make the filling. Excellent. Very good. This is a vegetable shortening, and we put vegetable oil. So we put about half teacup of the oil to mix, and with a little bit sesame oil.
say the dough, we're going to cut the small pieces for 100 gram. We put a little bit of oil in this bowl. Now, Kishula, I want you to roll in this one. Two teaspoons spreading on here. We're going to fold it. You're using the finger to pinch this salt. Put a half of like this and half like this. From here, we're rolling them, roll together. And then we push, 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 push. How long do you let it cook? We're cooking until they are crispy golden brown. Mr. Chu, how many of these do you make a day? I make, my people, they're making about 2,000 a day. Whoa. Yes. That's yes. a lot. Yes, yes, yes. If you're in the mood for a savory snack, I'd recommend trying green onion cakes. Green onion cakes are crispy on the outside and perfectly warm and soft on the inside. You'll often see green onion cakes served in restaurants and food trucks. Push, 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 push. Oh, good. It's so good, right? Yeah. Thank you to join me today. I'm so happy that you are so capable to learning how to make green onion cake. I hope the knowledge pass on to your generation and enjoy more cooking at home. Thank you. Autumn leaves. Autumn leaves are nature's confetti. One last party before winter arrives. Now we'll be making a quick and easy chicken noodle soup. The ingredients are one tablespoon of olive oil or butter, one small yellow onion, chopped about three quarter cup, two ribs of celery, half inch chopped, one to two large carrots peeled, half an inch sliced, about one and a half cups, four cloves of garlic minced, two bay leaves, eight cups of chicken stock, two to three cups of cooked shredded chicken, eight ounces of egg noodles, one tablespoon of minced flat leaf parsley, one teaspoon of sea salt, a quarter teaspoon of fresh cracked black pepper to taste. Now for the instructions. In a large soup pot, heat the butter or olive oil over medium heat. When the oil is glistening, add the onion, celery, carrots, and cook, stirring often until the onions are translucent, about five minutes. When I think of a comforting food, chicken noodle soup always comes to mind. It's really healthy and flavorful. It's especially enjoyable on the cooler evenings. Add the garlic and cook for one minute longer. Add the chicken stock and bay leaves. Bring to a boil over high heat. Reduce heat 
to medium and cook until the vegetables are nearly tender, about 10 minutes longer. Add the chicken, egg noodles, parsley, salt and pepper. Bring to heavy simmer. Place a lid on the pot to keep the liquid from evaporating. Maintain a low boil. Heavy simmer until the noodles are tender and the chicken is warmed through about 10 minutes longer. Mmm, smell that chicken soup. It smells so good. Oh, that's delicious. Amy Wu and the Warm Welcome by Kat Tsang. When Amy arrives at school, Miss Mary has a wonderful surprise, a new student. This is Lin, says Miss Mary. He moved here from China. Can everyone give him a big warm welcome? Welcome, Lin, says Amy's class. Lin grins and opens his mouth, but he shuts it again. His cheeks glow red. For lunch, Lin eats dumplings and tangerines. I'm having a dumpling party tonight, Amy says. Did you make those? Lynn smiles, but doesn't reply. During playtime, Amy invites Lynn aboard on her pirate ship. He puts on a hat, but doesn't sing. Yo-ho! During show and tell, Amy picks Lynn to share his favorite sport. He holds up a soccer ball, but doesn't say a word. Wow, new classmate, says mom after school. Did you make him feel welcome? I tried, says Amy, but I don't know if I did. Just then, Lynn's dad arrives with Lynn's little sister. Lynn's face lights up. He giggles and chatters in Chinese. His sister giggles and chatters in Chinese. This is a whole new Lynn. Amy ponders the two Lynn's. As she and her mom arrive at the store, she ponders while they buy dumpling skins. She ponders while they choose dumpling fillings. Amy's mom looks in their cart. That's enough for our guests, don't you think? Amy pondering becomes a brilliant plan. Will it be enough for a few more, she asks? At home, Amy's grandma helps her roll out a long sheet of paper. Amy chooses her favorite markers. Then Grandma writes the message while Amy says it out loud. She already knows the characters. Juan starts soft like the hoot of an owl. Ying flies from her tongue like the ring of a bell. And Ni sounds a lot like Ni. Altogether, it means welcome. And welcome is exactly what Amy wants to say. Amy waits with her banner as the guests arrive. First come her parents' friends from work, then come Amy's friends from school. And finally, there's Lynn. Amy hands tighten on her banner. She grins and opens her mouth. Then she shuts it again. Her cheeks glow red. Everyone is watching, but the words stick in Amy's throat. She thinks the character's in her mind. Juan, starts out soft like a hoot of an owl. Ying flies from her tongue like the ring of a bell. And Ni sounds a lot like Ni. But she can't say them, no matter how hard she tries. A finger taps on her shoulder, then points to the table where grown-ups are making dumplings. He doesn't say anything, but Amy understands. Lynn makes a dumpling shaped like a little boat. Amy makes a dumpling shaped like a little purse. Boat, 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 purse, purse, purse. Together their dumplings tumble in the pot. 
The boats float beside the purses, and the purses float beside the boats. Everyone eats dumplings until they can't eat another bite. It's time for Lynn to go home. Amy sees her banner. She takes a deep breath. Juan starts out soft like the hoot of an owl. Ying flies from her tongue like the ring of a bell. And Ni sounds a lot like Ni. Amy's family laughs. Silly goose, they say. Welcome is for the beginning of a party, not the end. But Amy knows better. It's never too late for a welcome. Thanks for inviting me to Continental Treat. I heard that this restaurant has been around for many years. Can you please explain the history of this restaurant? Yes, of course. Well, first of all, welcome to our, to our third generation family bistro. We have been around since 1982 and my parents have started it. And we specialize in traditional Central and Eastern European cuisine, which simply means lots of delicious pierogies and schnitzels. What would you say makes your dishes extra special? I think it's uh, definitely comfort food and we have recipes which have been in our family for a few generations now, and uh, we just try to bring that to uh, our customers which visit our family bistro. That sounds great. What dish would you say is a must try? For sure, my mom's dill pickle soup is famous, and the second thing would be our delicious pierogies. I love pierogies. Me too. Kisara, you know what? Our chef is just about ready to uh, make pierogies. Would you like to help him out today? Yes, please. Amazing. We always need the help. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'd like to learn how to make uh, pierogies, sweet pierogies. Today we have a blueberries and strawberries. Those are some of the favorite. Blueberries are very simple. We just put the blueberries fresh or frozen. And then we use uh, cream cheese, mascarpone cheese, which is Italian cheese, with some sugar. We mix together and put some uh, white chocolate chips and we have a filling ready. Very good. What inspired you to become a chef? Well, I decided to become a chef when I was a little bit younger than you, um, helping my mom cooking. My mom, uh, has been and it's still a very good cook and um, making a good uh, savory as in sweet dishes and I never stopped uh, since nine years old. That sounds wonderful. You like when people enjoy your food? Yeah. I think this is the most important. When we cook something and we see the smiles after people finish eating, cannot be any better reward. Would you agree? I agree. In order to have that feeling better when we make the pierogies, we're gonna put this in a freezer for about half an hour, so it's gonna be more solid. Take some of the sour cream and then a spoon of the sugar and mix all together, we'll be ready for our sauce. Which dishes do you enjoy preparing the most? Well, in last uh, 15 years, my favorite dishes are dishes from the grill. Uh, savory or dessert, equally good. Also, dishes which my friends or my family request from me on a special occasion. Very good. You take this doll, flip over, so the part where the flower is, it will be the part where we put the filling. And then you just put a little bit, and then you just fold in half gently, like this. We use our fingers to make a nice design. Okay, now, good natural, very good. So we 
gonna put this uh, like the other one in the freezer so we're gonna be nice and solid and then we cook. What advice would you give to young bakers? Cook with your heart and share all the food with others. on the spoon and then just put in the uh, clarified butter. Pierogies are one of my favorite dishes to enjoy. My mom and I often buy pierogies at the local farmer's market. Pierogies are boiled dumplings filled with a variety of fillings, such as cheese and potato, wild mushrooms or fruit. In Canada, we have the world's largest pierogi, located in Glendon, Alberta. The town's giant pierogi and fork monument stands 27 feet tall and weighs approximately 6,000 pounds. Thank you for teaching me how to make fruit pierogies. They look delicious. Thank you. It was a pleasure working with you. Thank you for all the great help. Every culture has its own unique celebrations. Whichever special occasion you are celebrating, whether it be a large or an intimate gathering, there is one thing that remains true everywhere around the world. Rituals and celebrations help ground us in tradition. It gives us the opportunity to feel excited about what's to come, to laugh, to cry, and to create special memories together as a community.